Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnought, a upcoming game that allows you to manage fleets in various navies, build ships, design ships, and fight ships in 3D battles. Very much a 3D version of Rule the Waves is what the game aspires to be. The game is currently in early access, uh, which features a very basic campaign, which is a single war between the British and the Germans in 1890, and then also about, I think, 53 or so Naval Academy missions, which are sort of like random challenges where you have to design ships and then uh, to a particular standard to overcome a particular obstacle, uh, and then also a uh, random battle generator. In today's video, we're going to be starting a brand new campaign for the British Empire in the campaign part of the game. Now, we had been doing a German campaign, and the war had been going well for us. We were a little bit over a year into the game, but because the game is still in early access and because it is still very early in the campaign's development, there was a patch that came out the other day, and it actually made all of the save games uh, corrupt. So you're not able, you weren't able to carry your saves forward from one patch to the next. And so unfortunately, the German campaign that we had been working on uh, was lost to that patch. So I decided to go ahead and start a new campaign because I was enjoying it and it seemed like there were a lot of folks on the channel who were enjoying watching it. And since we had played through seven, eight episodes of the German campaign, I figured why not give the campaign a look from the British perspective. Now, I did decide to start the war by designing my own fleet. Uh, the previous one with the Germans, I didn't design my fleet. In this one, I did decide to go ahead and design the ships in my fleet. Um, we start with seven battleships, eight heavy cruisers, 20 light cruisers, and 30 torpedo boats. That's decided by me, so you're given a certain amount of money to build your starting fleet, and that's the composition it came up with based on uh, the money that I had. Now, it does mean the Germans have more battleships, more heavy cruisers, slightly fewer light cruisers, and way less torpedo boats. Obviously, this isn't historical. The British had like 50 battleships at this point in time, historically. A war between Germany and the British Empire in 1890 wouldn't have even been a contest. In 1890, the British fleet had twice as many battleships as the next two closest naval powers. They didn't abandon the two-to-one policy until the Dreadnought era, where the Germans are really giving them a go and, and run for their money in terms of naval shipbuilding. Germans probably never really stood a chance to overcoming the British because they had to maintain a large continental army while also building ships, whereas the British didn't. They just built ships. And so, and the British were the largest empire in the world, although the German uh, local in industrial economy was obviously, I believe Germany produced more steel and things like that. So, you know, Germany. Anyway, um, but, but it shouldn't be underestimated just how massive the British shipbuilding industry was at this time. Um, with that being said, we built our starting fleet uh, based on my current estimates, although this might change. I'm not sure if it's reflecting the updated ships in, in at sea, but we're showing a $8.7 million budget surplus, which should be good. That'll give me a nice construction budget. Uh, we have 1,800 crew in reserve, I believe, or training uh, with 228, I believe, per month coming online. Uh, 3.7 million is left in the bank after all my spending. That should get refreshed a bit as we start going into the future. Um, we have unrest of two, naval prestige of two. Those are both the starting points. The British actually start with seven provinces, where the Germans only have four. We have 67 active ships, the seven battleships, eight heavy armored cruisers, 20 light cruisers, and 30 torpedo boats. Our docks start a little bit bigger. I think the, I think the German docks start at 9,000 tons. The British docks start at 10,500. We're going to build uh, to expand those. Now, the cost per month is is. I believe fixed. So like six months is 5 million, 12 months is 10 million, 18 months is 15 million and 24 months is 20 million. I don't know if there's an advantage to like going all the way out to 24 months. You can cancel early and get a small percentage of that. But honestly, I don't know that there's really an advantage. I mean, you get a shorter build time, but you get stuff faster. So I think the first thing I'm actually going to do is just going to go ahead and do a six month build for 500 tons to get those shipyards up to 11,000 tons. And we'll reevaluate from there. Um, that's going to cut into my monthly balance by 800000 We've also up, upped our crew training to 100% and tech budget to 100%. Uh, we're keeping the transport capacity where, it's it, where it is because currently our, our transport levels are at 100%. As we take casualties, we'll bump that up. But I want to have a little bit of extra spending money, so I don't want to quite increase that yet. 
Uh, shipyard developments, the 833, fleet maintenance, 3.6 million, and total expenses, 34 million, which I'm assuming is most of that is the ships I constructed. Um, research, we're going to focus on armor quality. Um, the, one of the things here is if you, if you turn research off, you can see we're going to research the next level of armor quality, which is nickel steel armor in 20 months. But if I focus on it, it'll cut it from 20 down to nine months. So that's pretty damn fast. Also gun layouts here, which allow us to have up to three centerline turrets and eight inch caliber for secondary guns. So basically like early quasi type dreadnoughts, or I guess technically the, uh, the, the Brandenburg class for the Germans. Those were sitting out at 41 months. I'm going to go ahead and research it, and that'll get us up at 18 months. Still a ways out, or maybe that's 16. I can't quite read that. But the reason I'm doing that is that really, there's not really anything else to research that'll happen qu more, you know, quicker. We could do range finders, which are obviously important for accuracy and things like that. Um, but it's 33 months out, so I guess I'd rather go with the gun layout. We could go with shells, which would give us like better armor penetration. That's 12 months out. Gun layouts are 18. Let's do the shells, actually. Let's let's get better guns uh, or better shells. I'm not really worried about three centerline turrets for a little while. Uh, explosives are only four months out, but I think that's so close. We saved two months by researching it, but honestly, four months, I'm not going to design a new ship in the next four months anyway. So we'll do shells at 12 months, explosives at four. Uh, internal protection, which is, is around damage control. That's currently sitting out at 62 months. If I do that, it's 21. I'd rather get something sooner. So we'll keep uh, the 10 months on shells. And Or actually, if I cut down on what I'm researching on, we save even more time. So if we're only doing one fleet priority, then it's eight months on shells. If we're doing two, it's 10 months. And if we do three, it's 12 months. So that's interesting. So what we'll do is we'll do armor quality, shells, and then boilers, which will give us lighter boilers, which will allow us to, to I guess, move our ships more effectively it'll reduce boiler weight and yeah the rest of the stuff doesn't really have any you know we could do small caliber guns which give us better accuracy we could focus on cruiser design but it's still so far out we're not even really clear what the next discovery is so it doesn't really speed things up that much for us same for just destroyer design so we'll just keep things uh, as they are right now we're, we're researching those priorities nothing else really looks all that interesting other than some stuff which really isn't super in the demo yet or the demo the uh the campaign yet like all the other stuff that gives us months is like work in progress stuff um so yeah torpedo tubes would be nice but i don't even know what the next one is so all right so let's take a look at the ships that we've designed i designed the royal sovereign class of battleships here uh which is these are all of our battleships are of the royal sovereign class uh they uh, make 17 and a half knots as the historical royal sovereign the first of the pre-dreadnoughts did why does that say air mount one? I'm not sure. Huh. I don't know why it says air mount one. The design is legal, so whatever. Anyway, Royal Sovereign it has a 10,500 ton displacement, 17 and a half knots, only a range of 7,300 or 33 kilometers. That's a pretty short range uh, for a large ship like this. Standard bulkheads, but they're going to be operating in the North Sea, so I'm not too worried about range. It's not a global map yet. Crew quarters are cramped, coal fuel, natural boilers, steam basic engines, semi-balanced strutter and steam steering. That's all normal stuff. Armor's compound armor. We did also add the barbette, or no, we added the Citadel level one. We want heavy shells, so more penetration, more HE, more shell damage. Does increase the likelihood of the ship blowing up. Standard ammo shells, black powder brown propellant, uh, shell charge is black powder. Hydraulic turrets with enhanced reloading, that's the one upgrade there. We stuck pretty heavy on the armor belt. I'm pretty happy with this. This is a much more heavily armored battleship than what the Germans had uh, when I was fighting with them. So we have a 10-inch main belt of armor, 3.3 in the front and 2.3 in the aft. We have a 1.3 inch main deck, uh, 1.5 on the turret tops and 1.3 on the five inch uh, tops and then uh, 1.3 on the casemate armor. Top armor is pretty light, but that's because the range at which we're going to be engaging the enemy is so small that we're not going to get very much plunging fire. I mean, in theory, they could engage us at deeper ranges, but with these early ships, you're not likely to get that high arcing angle that's going to lead to a lot of deck armor penetration, so that's less important right now. We can save weight there. Main belt, most of the stuff's going to be coming in horizontal, so that's why I went with the main belt. Um, conning tower, 10.6. That's the strongest armor on the ship. Turret armor, side armor is 10.5, so these big turrets have 10.5 inches of armor, 
which if you compare that to their main guns, I don't know if I can see what the penetration powers are on these main guns. Don't let me see that. We can look at that uh, elsewhere. And then we have uh, five inch guns as our secondaries. We actually have 16 five inch guns. So we have two five inch guns in turrets. So if we actually take a look at the ship, uh, we have two five inch turrets in the rear of the ship. Um, and then we have these casemate guns along the side of the ship here, which are all five inches. So we have a total of um, eight five inch guns. Two of them are, are in turrets, sorry, 18 five inch guns. Two of them are turrets, 16 of them are in casemates. 715 man crew. Um, And only one funnel. So that's a problem from like an engine efficiency perspective. We get a negative 17% acceleration, negative 30% torque at higher RPMs, and negative 4.7 operational range. But for whatever reason, the, the initial hold they stuck you with doesn't actually allow you to have more than one funnel on a 10,500 ton ship. So nothing we can do about that. If we take a look at the Good Hope class, which is our armored cruiser class here, this is a 3,500 ton ship, so much smaller, although it still looks like it's on the same type of frame. Again, only room for one funnel here, uh, but because it's a much smaller ship, that one, well, actually, no, it's 44% efi engine efficiency here. So, yeah, we're going to get a bunch of penalties for that, too. Uh, we have a turret fore and aft, but just basically four 8-inch guns. These are 8-inchers. We have 4-inchers in our casemates, four of them. And then we have eight three-inch guns in our upper casemates. So a little bit more of a mixture of guns. Much smaller crew. It's a much smaller ship. Um, its speed is 18 knots, so slightly faster than the battleship. Range 7,900 kilometers, so slightly more than the battleship. Standard bulkheads. Um, and I think everything else is the same. Compound armor, enhanced reloading, standard shells. So there's no heavy shells on this. Armor belts, fairly weak for an armored cruiser, in my opinion. Four and a half inch main belt. Um, but that's because we're so limited on size at 3,500 tons. I was really surprised with the light cruiser design here. It's a thousand tons less than the heavy cruiser. It's so 2,500 tons. We were able to get up to 3.1 inches on the main belt though. Part of me wonders if it's, if the armor layout on a CL hull is just smaller. So even though the belt is, is proportionally greater, uh, the belt itself may be covering a smaller space on the ship. Not sure. She makes 19 and a half knots. So a little bit faster again. Uh, 12,000 uh, kilometers, much longer range, still standard bulkheads. She was, I was really impressed with this ship's design. We were able to fit 13 four inch guns. They're in open mounts, so there's no turret per se. Um, but we do have, this is kind of what I did with my German light cruiser. We've got a, a pretty powerful broadside of up to seven guns on a broadside of four, four inchers, which was more popular as a, as a German caliber for light cruisers than British, but I went with it anyway. We also have four two-inch guns in uh, casemates here along the side of the ship, and then we have four underwater torpedo tubes, all while still being able to maintain 19 and a half knots. And then we went with our torpedo boat ship here, the glass jaw. Again, I don't know why it's giving me these errors. It allowed me to build the ships. A 200-ton displacement, 27.2-knot starting torpedo boat, few bulkheads, 3,600 kilometers range, really short. Um, she has two torpedo tubes of the 15-inch variety and a 3-inch gun in the front of the ship. So pretty decent gun, better than the German torpedo boat that we built in our campaign. So those are our starting ships. You've already seen the amount of ships that we have in each. And I think that's everything. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll move from January to February. So the British Empire loses two transports in the North Sea. The Germans lose one transport in the North Sea. We go ahead and we take a look at our research, at our finances. The British trade um, is at 98%. We now have 11 million in the bank. Probably should increase this so that we can begin repairing our losses for our merchant ships. That is going to eat into our budget considerably, though. You can see we just cut our monthly balance in half. We still have 11 million in the bank. Um, additionally, I probably should send some of my ships out at sea. Currently, I only have four battleships in sea control. I have four, or is it four or five heavy cruisers? Four heavy cruisers in sea control. And then we have 10 light cruisers in sea control. And so that means that, you know, obviously we could have more ships in sea control, which will increase the likelihood of outnumbering the enemy if we end up finding them in battle. Uh, but it'll also um, give us better protection over our convoys so that they don't get uh, hit by enemy raiders. Uh, resulting in considerable losses. So we're going to go ahead and switch several of these ships over to sea control, the battleship Africa, the battleship Iron Duke, a couple of the heavies and a couple of the lights. Um, and then our torpedo boats, I don't even know if any of them are at sea. We have a couple at sea. Um, also, I'll go ahead and select Avon. We'll go ahead and move down to Spitfire. Go ahead and choose sea control, and that'll change all of them. So that's nice. 
Okay. Do we have any battles this month? It doesn't look like it. So we, what's our budget now look like? We're at almost $4 million in, in surplus cash. Uh, meanwhile, our research here, um, shells are at 11 months, eight months for armor quality, and six months for boilers. So go ahead and move forward to March. We lose three more transports in the North Sea. God damn. So we did build 1.8% more merchants, but because we lost three more transports, we're down to 97% of our transport capacity. Still nothing on the, uh, on the map for battles, though, huh? Germany discovered mechanical armor forging. Fuck. Don't want to give them an advantage in armor. Two more transports in the North Sea. Our construction at least kept pace with the losses. No sign of any battles here. 3.3 3 million balance. Naval funds almost 19 million. Uh, I guess let's just put all our light cruisers at sea. Maybe that'll increase the likelihood of protecting ourselves. So all 20 light cruisers are now at sea. They should be. And then let's also put all of our heavy cruisers at sea. I don't want to put all the battleships at sea quite yet. Most of these guys are set to the North Sea. A few are set to the English Channel. That as our finance is still in pretty decent shape. They also discovered triple expansion steam engines. God, that's way ahead of us. So did they discover the technology or did they develop the technology? Like, did they discover it here so they know what the next thing is? Or did they actually get to it? White powder. New technology and explosives. The first smokeless powder, otherwise known as powder B, is a highly effective material to use as propellant and can send shells at long ranges, but is unsafe in storage conditions compared to the earlier powder. Increases gun range, accuracy, penetration, shell weight, and muzzle velocity. Increases shell cost, ammo detonation chance, does shell cost play a factor in anything but ship construction? Like, is there an ammo replenishment cost? Ammo detonation chance, flash fire chance, etc. Germany loses one ship in the North Sea. We didn't lose anything here. So we discovered the technology. If we go to explosives. So you can see white powder is discovered and we're researching the next thing. So it does mean that they now have triple expansion engines. Dear God, save us. Meanwhile, I didn't even think we were close to that, so that must have just been like a random event that occurred. They lose another transport in the North Sea, and we're finally going to have our first battle here in June of 1890. It's a convoy battle off the east coast of Britain. Oh, God. This does not look good. So we are attacking an enemy convoy, but they have four or three heavy cruisers, a light cruiser, in two battleships. How's our uh, training going on those ships? These guys are still green. Some of them are trained. Standard, standard. Uh. So a lot of how this battle will go depends on if the German ships are close in with the transports between us and them, or if we can get in on the transports before them. We've gotten our transport capacity back up to 101%. The victory points right now favor the Germans 525 to 150. Their tonnage in this battle is almost double ours. I'm almost tempted to just say put all the battleships at sea. Well, I already did that. They're all on sea control. The Caesar isn't, but... I'm surprised they get such a lopsided... Uh, Affair here. All right. Well, they finished a light cruiser. Where are we at research-wise? Two months on the boilers, three months on armor quality, seven months on shells. I could design new ships once we have armor quality and boilers. I wonder if there will be a way to rebuild your ships or upgrade certain technology. That would be nice. But let's go ahead and jump in here. And I can't auto-resolve that. We'll get our asses kicked. All right, three heavies, three lights. We have two battle lines. The lights are way back here, like way northeast is where the smoke is spotted. All 
Rev up max speed. Let's slow these heavy cruisers down to 15 knots. Maybe it'll let the CLs catch up a bit. First look at our ships in action. I'm curious what the German CLs are going to look like. Like, how heavy are their guns? We might have a better CL than them, but if we meet their battleships, we're pretty screwed. All right, so the CLs are catching up slowly. Let's slow down to half. Let me smoke is spotted to the east. Oh, there they are. What's in the van? Well, it's a warship because they're shooting at us. That's a CL for sure. Look at that. Three turrets on each broadside. I shouldn't say for sure. I think it's a CL. Let's go ahead and send our, our light cruisers out there. I could get on board with a suicidal torpedo charge of our light cruisers if we get an enemy battleship sunk. That would give us a victory. That's the one positive of being outnumbered here is like, we don't really have a chance of, if we sink one of their battleships, we could win a decisive victory. A very decisive victory in a way that they probably wouldn't, even if they sink our multiple ships. All right, another ship in line probably behind it. All right, let's speed the formation up a little bit to full to 15 knots. Partial pen, nice hit there. Partial pen on a question mark. It says DD, but it's, it's definitely not. The partial pen came from one of the light cruisers, too. I think that's the first hit. I mean, warship is on fire. We're going to have to be careful not to collide with our CL task force. Something's firing a broadside of four shells at us. That might be their battleship, if, or maybe a heavy cruiser. Identifying is up to 89%. If we can get our whole formation firing at them, maybe we can defeat them in detail? I don't know. All right, the, it is a Cologne class. CL, six inchers. Our max speed is 18 knots, so they do have Actually, that's our speed. And our CLs can run faster than them, too. Yeah, we're gonna... We're gonna run right through our CL line. Smoke screen. I guess I could go parallel or could get into the smoke screen for them. We did get a hit, didn't do a lot of damage. Yeah, percentage wise, less than a half a percent chance to hit. So our CAs are screening our CLs sort of. But everybody's firing on this lone enemy ship. Ooh, nice. A penetration of 186 and a fire. That might do some damage here. An 8-inch shell struck it. Burning between these two turrets. Well, that's the one advantage. We'll have a concentration of fire for sure. We'll speed back up to full... We're letting our CLs get out ahead of us, which is fine. It's the objective. Two minutes left on the smoke screen. Another enemy ship behind it. Oh, these are some of the tar some of the merchants. We did see four shell splashes before, but no sign of the enemy, uh, no sighting of the enemy heavy ships. Let's switch these guys to 
off for their torpedoes. Just in case. Percent chance. All right, we got more warships too, I think. Nope, these are all merchants. So the CLs are treating back through the enemy convoy. So they do have heavier guns on their CL than ours, but we've got rapid fire advantages. Our, our CL has switched to targeting, or someone switched to targeting the merchants. Right. Oh, this is a mess. More enemy warships or merchants back here. I think they were probably secondary guns. Still trying to catch up to that. These transports have guns? Slowly catching up to that enemy CL. Like, they're shooting at us. They're not hitting anything. Oh, never mind. They got a penetration there. They have four-inch guns? All right. I'm just going to tell these guys to let loose with some broadsides on these merchants. We're still too far from the enemy's sail for it to matter. Iron flooding. God damn. Why are these merchants armed? Seriously, it's done more damage to me than the enemy light cruiser up here. Alright, Canterbury's turning away. Taking a fair bit of damage here. She's gonna pull out a line while they take care of that. Structure's still in good shape, so they should be able to repair her. Is this seal not moving? I know it avoided a collision. Centaur is flooding now, too. Well, that's gonna suck. So much for a fast pursuit. Okay, one merchant sinking. Kaiserin's gonna sink here in a second. think. There we go. So the head of this enemy transport column is getting savaged, although they, they are giving us a little bit of an, an annoyance. Take care of that other Merchant here. Well, we can hurt their economy at least by wrecking this enemy formation. sinking here in a second. She is. Gazelle taking some damage here. Alright. Canterbury fixed its damage.
sinking. Gazelle should be sinking here in a second. Bavaria should also be sinking here in a moment. Still just the one enemy CL that we've spotted. Again, we saw some heavy shells coming in before from out this direction. Out toward the north, I think, relative to where we are now. Bavaria sinking. These two additional down here. I don't know that we'll get the other ones up front. Okay, Gazelle sinking. Edius? I'm not sure how you pronounce that. It's about to be going down. I don't even know if, like, minor damage to two of my light cruisers is going to be outweighed by the transports that we sink. Alright, now she's sinking. So there's Cornell... I don't think they would name something Cornell after a battle that hasn't happened yet. And, uh, Nuremberg? These are, like, all German... These names are way too noble for, uh... The, sh the ships here. So, Liedender... Liedender? Liedender? I don't know how to pronounce that. Is the lead ship in the cruiser task force with Canterbury coming in behind. And Centaur is going to cut off the whole, or I guess Centaur's the oh shit no didn't give me damage I guess Centaur was the flagship hey don't worry just a little bit of love bump alright so Centaur's the when you make that formation tight since you guys are already so close doesn't seem like they're taking damage. When you ram enemy ships, you take damage, but maybe friendly fire or something is off. All right. I don't know where that one's going to swing to. Or who you're shooting at. Centaur's coming up. All right, so Canterbury will be in the rear. Lender in behind and Centaur in the lead. Heavy cruisers are in a, in a line abreast. Firing on the enemy merchants that we still have in sight. Cornell in Nuremberg. I'm gonna go ahead and turn these guys toward the merchants. We got a nice broadside going, but the range is such that the accuracy isn't high enough to warrant staying still, and we'll go up to times five speed. These guys probably make like ten knots in the first place, so. I guess we could see. Twelve twelve and a half knots. So we've got a, a almost a six knot advantage in speed over them. I wonder if the enemy ships retreated? You'd think they had a massive firepower advantage that they wouldn't, but... I'm okay if they want to let me pick off their merchants. Alright, we're getting some decent range shots here, doing some damage to the Cornell. Flooding damage. Alright, well our CLs can screen the heavies. They're only moving at 14 knots. The seals are coming up at 19. One of the things I expect the game won't have, but I do like that Rule the Waves has, is the concept of fatigue of your crew over the course of a battle. I doubt that exists in here, but I love the idea of, like, you guys have been moving at max speed, all of the guys who shove the coal into your boilers are exhausted, and so now you can't. Or, like, the grates, your boiler grates or whatever, are clogged, and so you can't be as efficient over time. Like, I love those ideas, because they did play a role in some long, you know, chases, like the Falklands. But I doubt that'll be modeled in-game. Cornell seems to be pretty robust. I don't have a lot of guns bared on her with us coming up this way. Head on. 
God damn it. I told the... Don't freaking interdict the convoy. I guess I did have the CA's turn. I should have just set them to screen and then they would have managed following the CAs. Let's go ahead and turn and get their broadside on the TR before it has a chance to get any foreign shell hits on me. Oh, they got a penetration. Didn't do much damage, but most folks or some folks have switched their fire up to the Nuremberg. I don't know if I commented on it or not, but I turned the, uh, I turned off torpedo firing by the CLs earlier in the battle because I didn't want to risk wasting torpedoes. Firing up a line definitely risks hitting your own ships. An overpen. That was a four incher, another four incher. Those four inchers can do some pretty good work. Probably should have switched over to HE against these transports. We've been firing auto. We've been seeing a lot of overpens. Wonder if we would have seen left less of those if we'd switched to HE. Armored cruisers in action. I still haven't spotted the enemy warships that were shooting at me earlier. Man, that's a lot of shells. We're still good on ammo, though. Quite a bit of shells left. Over 400. It's over 100 rounds of gun. All right. Three flooding hits. see the shells flying in here. Penetration fire. Two more flooding. Alright, she's a goner. It is only a matter of time. As the World War II era Liberty ship goes down. Smoke spotted to the south west. We can end the battle now. But I don't want to. Wait, they're behind us? All right. Um I should just set them to scout. But let's just go find the enemy. If we get an advantage, or maybe we can sink one or two of their warships without loss of will. Otherwise, we may just end the battle here. It's interesting that my guns didn't traverse back to center line. I guess I would have expected them to do that. All right, crank up the speed, boys. Full speed ahead. Shouldn't you be turning this way if you're going to screen? So that's times five. I assume that means we're close. ACLs. Turn the hell around. You're not screening from the rear. Oh. The Cologne, the light cruiser that we saw. There's also some enemy shells coming in from over here. Let's turn toward the enemy light. Let's try and... Pick them off piecemeal rather than facing enemy battleships and very heavy shells. 18 knots. Again, we have a slight, in theory, speed advantage, or I guess equal to them. Oh my god. 
Turn back the other way. Full speed, you guys are a mess. Trying to get this formation going again. Alright, you follow here. And then you can follow this CL. guys get yourselves back into action i hope i s oh shit the entire enemy battle line is off to our left heavy cruiser saxony she looks like she has smaller guns than us three i'm assuming this is the entire enemy heavy cruiser flotilla Let's turn back away from the enemy formation. We've got this enemy CL out here all by itself. We turn away and increase the range on the enemy formation. Maybe we can box in this enemy CL. Destroy them in detail. Do it, Thierry. I don't know why I'm Russian, but hey. Shit, let's slow down here. I don't know how what the range is on these guys just outside of torpedo range, I think. Oh, no, they're way out. Never mind. Hey, we hit one of their CLs with a partial pen. Three-incher. What are their speeds? So their CAs have much better speed. Oh, by the way, I can't end the battle anymore. I assume that would just stay there forever, but it, it, it went away. So I guess when you're within a certain radius of enemy warships, you can't end. Flash fire detonation. She's gone. One of our shells, it looks like it was a, a three incher. That's it. Penetrated this light cruiser and caused her to blow up. That's a lot of big guns on this guy. Six inches on a protected cruiser hull. Well, that very quickly just turned this battle into a, at least for the moment, a clear win for us. I don't know why you guys are still shooting at this guy. Isn't he sinking? Not quite. Saw him blow up, but they're trying desperately to save her. Sometimes these flash fire detonations are weird. Alright, I'm gonna assume... turn. She's sinking now. So we're going to turn our CA task force back toward the enemy line. It only appears to be three heavies. No idea where their battleships are. But with six cruisers, we can take three heavies. I'll lead with the CLs. Oh, actually, let's just end the battle here. Now that we're out of sight. Gives me a victory, 483 to 1. Enemy CL sunk. They only had one, I guess. They had three CAs and two battleships. Meanwhile, we sank one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of their 11 merchants and the light cruiser. And then we disengaged because prudence is the better part of valor. And so the first battle in the war is a British victory and a large convoy raid which we wiped out a big portion of it, and we are now ahead in victory points. The CA and CLs are repairing. Our finances are still pretty good. Transport capacity is still pretty good. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that result. No more battles for June, so we'll move forward to July.
Germany loses another transport in the North Sea, and there is an ambush. So we managed to sneak close to the enemy with our torpedo boats, should we try to attack. Four British torpedo boats versus two German heavy cruisers. The opportunity to damage the enemy heavy cruiser force presents itself. The enemy has completed three heavy cruisers since the game started. I believe they had ten at the start versus our eight. So, yeah, I mean, I definitely think that would be something we should do. And then apparently there's a North Atlantic convoy battle between two German heavy cruisers again, and then our heavy cruiser, the powerful two light cruisers, Medusa and Scott, torpedo boat Hardy, and five transports. So it looks like they're raiding our convoy here. Now, the interesting thing is that it looked like their heavy cruisers might have had lighter guns than ours, so we might actually have a firepower advantage over their CAs with our own. And then our light cruisers, those guys, I think they can fend for themselves. I'm hoping. So we'll see. It looks like also the Germans are transferring fleets here from Danzig to Hamburg. And then also Emden. So you can see here there's dotted lines indicating fleet transfers, which like maybe we should do and concentrate our forces. Maybe that's why the off the coast battle in the last video or last uh, last battle was so one-sided as if we need to maybe take a look at, at our ship's placement. I mean, a lot of things say North Sea, but like maybe if we concentrate in a few ports, we'll have better luck. But I don't know how that impacts convoy escorts. In any event, next month, we're supposed to get boilers. Two months from now, armor quality. We could look at maybe building a better ship, maybe a better battleship. In those next two months, we will also... Oh, we've already completed our dockyards here. I didn't see an alert to that. Huh. But if we take here a look here, we're now up to 11,000 ton shipyard size. So to that end, let's expand it by another thousand tons. That'll take a year. Doesn't do me much good on like light cruisers where I need bigger hulls, but I, I am assuming for a battleship I can build up to 11,000. Looks like it. I don't know what the, like, I don't really know if there's a big difference in those 500 tons. It doesn't look like the ship gets longer, which is, I think, the main thing I wanted. So the, the life, it's still going to be limited to one, one funnel. So maybe we wait. I mean, we're going to wait either way for the extra armor and stuff. But yeah. I think that's going to do it for the first video here of our new campaign, looking at the German campaign. Appreciate you guys for tuning in yet again to another video of Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, a game currently in development by Game Labs, the folks behind Ultimate General Civil War in Gettysburg, as well as um, Naval Action, Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail, and others. Um, but yeah, this has uh, been another THG production. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'm out.